Here we are, guys. The year's 1975. I made a couple of bad choices in 1975. It caused me to need some lawyer assistance. I got in some trouble about some money. I got myself arrested. I didn't even know how to call my dad. I didn't even know how to call him. But I had to because I had to get out of jail. So here's how the chain goes when you're mob adjacent. I call my dad. He calls Romy Lewis. Romy Lewis is a bail bondsman. Romy comes to jail. He gets me. And I explain to him what happened. I didn't explain to him the crime. I explained to him the situation that got me put in jail. Which was, because I really wasn't a criminal or had no knowledge of the criminal laws, I took a lie detector test that I guess, in hindsight being 2020, I never should have took. But knowing that I had to fail the lie detector test because I was lying, I let the cops bamboozle me into thinking that they could take that flunked lie detector test to court and get me convicted. And they told me that if I confessed, it'd be a lesser crime. So naturally, being kind of dumb, I just fessed up and said, okay, I did it. Now, when Romy comes to get me, he pays the $20,000, which was two grand, which was probably a little bit of money back then, to get me out of jail. I sit in the front of his Lincoln in front of the Elmer's Police Department, and he tells me what happened. I explain to him. He didn't ask me about the crime. He just asked me, how I came to be arrested. And I explained to him that they gave me this lie detector test that I knew I flunked because I did it and they told me that they could take it to court and he looked at me like, what are you, nuts? You can't take a lie detector test to court. All you had to do was tell them, no, 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 unless they had evidence you'd have been fine. And by the way, if you can't trust yourself, who can you trust? And as we're driving, I got my head down and I'm thinking, he looks at me straight faced and says, by the way, your father's going to kill you. So I get home, naturally, I get murdered. I get rung up and down, and this is not in front of my mother now. My father doesn't even let my mother know that I'm in trouble. The next move my dad makes is he calls Jimmy the next day. Naturally, Jimmy says, what the fuck is wrong with your kid? Is he goofy? My dad tells him, yes, he must be, but we got to get him an attorney. I can't let this kid go to jail. My wife won't even be able to sleep. So here's the chain. Here's how it goes when you're mob adjacent. My dad calls Romy. Romy calls my dad back. My dad calls Jimmy. Jimmy calls a lawyer by the name of Robert McDonald. Now, Robert McDonald is a convicted something something, and he can't try cases in DuPage County. But he brings this drunken puppet by the name of John Maloney with him because he can indeed try cases. Now, when we go in front of the judge for the first time, the head judge in DuPage County at that time, 1975, his name was Alfred E. Woodward. You know who his son was? You know the guy who uncovered Watergate? That was his father. Bob Woodward, the guy who sunk Nixon, his father was the chief judge in DuPage County. And I got him. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do five years of jail. I'm crying every day. My father tells me, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He says, don't worry about it. Now, however it works, I don't exactly know how it works, but 20000 in a later favor got me six weeks, six weeks work release. I should have got five years. I got six weeks. And not only did I get six weeks, because I was in the produce business, I had to be in jail by 2 a.m. in the morning, and I had to go to work at 6 a.m four hours a day. First day I go, I walk into the work release and I'm scared to death. I've never been in jail before except the time when they put me in Elmer's for this situation I'm in. I'm looking at the guy's name tag and it's a name I, I recognize. It doesn't matter what the guy's name would, but turns out he was a mob friendly guy. Go figure. Mob adjacent means even when you're in jail, they take care of you. I was like a babe in arms. I didn't even have to go up into the jail. They would check me in, I put my street clothes on, they let me go lay down in a cell, and at six o'clock, they send me home. Six weeks, done, over. My mother never even knew I was in jail because I would come home right after I got out of there and she'd think I was just out. Now the future favor was a different story. At that point, my dad had moved off of the property in Elk Grove and we had grabbed a piece of property on North York Road in Elmhurst. 
again. It seemed like everything my dad did because of his luck and his knowledge and his hard work was a home run. So we've got this fruit stand on North York Road in Elmhurst and my dad's other favor besides the 20,000 was Jimmy was gonna be our partner, which was fine. I had known Jimmy my whole life. But what amazed me the most, Jimmy could have easy just came on Sunday and picked up an envelope. But do you know what that man was the second guy at work every single day after me? I opened up, so I was the first guy. But the second guy, even before my father, was Jimmy. He wanted to talk about respect for a man. He didn't need the work. But because he was involved, and because it was my father, he came and did his share for his end. While we were there, a funny thing happens. This man by the name of Ned Bakes, he gets out of jail. Turns out Ned was an old driver for Al Capone in the 20s. But now he just got out of jail for some stock swindle deal, whatever it was, and he worked for Brighton Crude Construction, who I guess back then was a mob, mob-influenced construction company that did a lot of road work. In fact, the parking lot that we had at the, at the fruit stand was gravel, and he had a Brighton Crude crew come in there and put asphalt in. All of a sudden, we had asphalt. Turns out that Ned Bank's real name, real name, from the 20s was Ignacio Spichizzi. Also turns out, in the 40s, Mr. Spichizzi slash Bakes had a headache with some mobster. Don't even really know who it was, but his watchdog was Paul the Waiter Rica, who was right up there with a cardinal right near the top. And as long as Paul Rica was alive, Ned Bakes was fine. Paul Rica dies. Not six weeks after Paul Rica dies, they find Ned Bakes on the corner of Route 53 and Lake Street in the trunk of his car with three in the top of his head and strangled. Now keep in mind, Ned was a nice guy. All my brother and I know was, it was a big guy who came every day to visit with Jimmy and my dad and brought donuts. We still don't know where he got those donuts. They were the best donuts we ever had. Being mob adjacent means not seeing guys as gangsters and criminals, just nice guys who bring donuts. 